website amvpsolutions.info and Facebook page Aussie Migration and Visa Professional Solutions. One of the best feelings in life is having moments with the ones you love, even if you're far away from each other. Despite being a thousand miles apart, our feelings haven't changed. Being beside you is a wish that I've long desired. With professional help, the long wait is over. Bridge the gap with Aussie Migration and Visa Professional Solutions. You can study, work, or live in Australia. With the help of our experts, you can fix your migration and visa application efficiently. Now, love doesn't have to be distant. Call us now. But you, everyone has it. Distractions are everywhere, which makes us feel far from our dreams. Now, there is a way to close that gap. With AMBTS, we can take the one less travel by. And that has made all the difference. Whether big or small, our dreams are there to take us to write our future. is colored now. To learn more, visit our website at amvpsolutions.info. Like us on Facebook at Aussie Migration and Visa Professional Solutions. watching our information session today. Now, we have already finished our discussion with the 485 visa application. Welcome, Welcome everyone. everyone. Today, today, we will be discussing child care center manager and child care worker occupations. We all know, know that education, education providers provides. here in Australia promote early childhood education under the vocational courses. This is because aside from chef, um, patisserie, automotive, finishing early childhood course or a diploma can give you a temporary resident visa under the graduate stream and a permanent resident visa. But as we go along with our discussion, we will discover some challenges that a student visa holder might experience without, if there is no proper guidance from a registered migration agent. So let's start our discussion today by going into the website of the Department of Home Affairs to see what are the visa options for one who finished a diploma course in early childhood education. I'll be sharing my screen. So as you can see, in the Department oh, of Home Affairs website, uh, the Child Care Center Manager with the ANSCO code 134111 may apply for certain visas. Uh, it is because the occupation is in the medium long-term strategic list, 
you have 189, 190, um, 407, the training visa, you have the temporary graduate visa, the under the graduate stream, you also have 482, 187, 494, these are employer-sponsored visas, and also with the 491. Um, both for the state or territory nominated and the family sponsor. On the other hand, the other occupation that can uh, be used for visa permanent resident purposes is the child care worker. But if you compare the visa options for a child care center manager and a child care worker, the child care worker is only available for 494 and um, the 187 regional sponsor visa. It's because this occupation is not in the medium to long-term list, but only in the regional occupation list. Now, other thing that we need to consider is the skills assessing authority. Now, for both occupations, the skills assessing authority is the ASEQUA. So uh, later on in our discussion, we will look into what are the requirements for a graduate of a diploma in early childhood education uh, undertake as to work experience and also the job description. Now, let's proceed with the provisional skills assessment. Now, if you have finished or completed um, two academic, at least two academic years, or at least 92 weeks, Tricos, 92 Tricos weeks, then you may be eligible for a temporary graduate visa, 485 visa under the graduate stream. But take note that this is only for child care center manager, and we know that. A manager has so many responsibilities and it's not an uh, easy job compared to a child care worker. So again, let me uh, emphasize that the temporary graduate visa is only an option for the occupation child care center manager. Why? Because it is in the medium to long term strategic list and the child care worker occupation is only in the regional occupation list. But still, uh, you will see later on what's the difference between, or what's the impact of having no um, if you want to apply for a child care worker. These occupations have different requirements as to number of work experience. Now, Upon completion of, this is the guideline that one must follow upon if the applicant is almost finished with his or her studies. Now, you need to finish a diploma of early childhood and the education provider must be accredited by ASEQUA. ASEQUA is Australian Children's Education and Care Quality authority. Now, I'll be reading some important uh, requirements or criteria before one can be eligible to apply for the 485 visa. Now, 485 visa requirements and the skills, provisional skills assessment requirements are different. You cannot apply for the 485 visa under the graduate stream if you have not applied for the provisional skills assessment. So let's discuss first, what are the requirements or what are the eligibility requirements for you to be able to apply for the provisional skills assessment? First would be um, an ASEQA nationally approved diploma or higher education and care qualification awarded by a CRICOS, RTO or institution. So that's the main requirement. You need to look into um, the education provider if they are registered with ASEQUA. 
And the second requirement, eligibility requirement, is that you have an evidence of at least 240 hours or 40 days of supervised work placement completed in an Australian workplace as part of your qualification. So these are the two main eligibility criteria so that you may be able to apply for the 485 visa under the graduate stream for the Occupation Child Care Center Manager. Payment, the payment is 330 and that includes tax already. Now, what are the supporting evidences that you need to attach? Take note that ASEQA is very um, strict when it comes to document submission. So you really must not just submit document without complying with their specific requirements, such as the certification of a color copy <coughs> of the identity page of your current valid passport. Second is the certified color copy of evidence of change of name, if you are married. Third is the certified color copy of the parchment of your qualification. Fourth is the certified color copy of the transcript of your qualification. And it must include the commencement and completion dates of your study in Australia. This is very important because um, they will compute the number of weeks of your studies. So there are instances where um, the applicant, the, the skills assessment applicant and the 485 visa applicant has been refused because the number of weeks of study did not comply with the 92 Cricos week requirement or the so-called Australian study requirement. So it's very important to look into the number of weeks offered by that particular education provider. Otherwise, it would be a very, uh, you will be in a problematic situation when your visa is about to expire. <coughs> and of course, the evidence of supervised work placement. And this is usually formally, formally issued by the RTO where you studied and also the applicant declaration and consent form and the authorized representative declaration and consent form. Now, um, let's proceed with the other requirement. Now, let's be, uh, upon completion of, or upon submission of your provisional skills assessment, they will give you a receipt and then you can now apply for the 485 visa. So in our next session, we will discuss the 485 visa application. So, so good, good day, everyone. everyone. Thank, Thank you for still watching our information session today. So, so good day, everyone. Thank you for still watching our information session today. Now, we have already finished our discussion with the 485V. Welcome, Welcome back. back. Thank, Thank you for you. still being with us today. So let us continue our discussion with the requirements of the temporary graduate visa, subclass 485, under the graduate work stream. Now, in our previous discussion, we have tackled what are the occupations if you that you can apply for 
if you finish a diploma of early childhood education and also the provisional skills assessment under ASEQA as the skills assessing authority. We also discussed that before, immediately before you finish your, your studies, and if you have already complied with, if you have finished your 240 work experience placement, then you can apply for the um, 485 visa. Now I'll share my screen. Now this is from the Department of Home Affairs website. And as you can see, if you are on a temporary graduate visa under the 485 stream, you can stay in Australia up to 18 months. And the cost of this visa is 1650 This is an onshore <coughs> visa application. Now, a lot of students question what will happen if upon the expiry of their student visa, there's still no decision of their 485 visa. Will their stay be lawful? Now, the answer would be depending on when you lodge your 485 visa application. Why? Because if you lodge your 485 visa application after the expiry of your student visa and date, then you will become unlawful. If you lodge your student, uh, your 485 visa, the temporary graduate visa, before the expiry of your student visa and before the decision of the temporary graduate visa under the graduate work stream, then you will be automatically given a bridging visa A. A bridging visa A is a non-substantive visa that will give you full work rights and will make your stay lawful. That's why it's called bridging visa because it is a temporary visa and it will automatically cease once there is a decision of your temporary graduate visa subclass 485 application. Now, what are the requirements? The requirements for the temporary graduate visa, I mean the eligibility requirements, are the following. One must be under 40, sorry, under 50 years of age. A lot of in, uh, individuals ask me, is there a criteria, age criteria requirement for student visa? The obvious answer would be um, no, but it should be if you want to apply for a temporary graduate visa, then you must be under 50 years of age. As you can see, the nature of the, the graduate work, the temporary graduate visa is to assist or to help recent international students to develop their skills, to look for an employer, improve their English and get enough work experience so that they can apply for a skilled visa or a employer sponsored visa and also finish their migration skills assessment. Now, uh, aside from the age requirement, you must also hold an eligible visa. The other requirement is that must have held a student visa in the last six months and have a qualification relevant on occupation on the skilled occupation list. Now, at the start of our information session, I have shown you uh, the skilled occupation list on the Department of Home Affairs website and found two occupations that is related to the uh, occupation, uh, early childhood education course. And have applied for a skills assessment in your nominated occupation. This refers to the application of the provisional skills assessment for the occupation child care center manager. And also you must provide evidence of adequate health insurance. Aside from that, you must also provide evidence 
that you have applied for an AFP police check and provide evidence of the required level of English. Now, the required level of English is um, overall six with no less than five. So that is the requirement for the Form 5 visa application. Now, at present, because there are so many testing centers that have been closed because of the pandemic, the Department of Home Affairs have granted consideration that if the applicant, the applicant, uh, the student from student to 485 applicant has not yet received the result of the English test, it is enough to attach the proof of booking. Now, um, so this is the requirement for the 485 visa application under the graduate work stream. So, so everyone, thank, thank you for still watching, watching our, our information, information session, session today. today. Now, now we, we have already finished our discussion, discussion with the 485 visa application, application in relation, relation to the, the professional skills assessment for child care center, center manager. manager. And uh, as, as I mentioned, um, the, the only, only occupation, occupation that, that can be eligible for a temporary graduate visa Professional skills assessment is the occupation child care center manager. Now, why is the child care worker not eligible for the 485 or the temporary rental visa? The answer is the child care worker occupation is only in the regional occupation list. So it cannot qualify with the criteria under the 485 temporary graduate uh, visa under the graduate work stream. Now, let's continue with the migration skills assessment. If you have uh, been granted a temporary graduate visa under the graduate work stream, then you can continue working as a child care center manager and comply with the number of years of work experience. Now I'll show you the website of ASECA so that we can see what are the uh, years of experience requirement and what should be the tasks that you will be doing as a child care center manager. So, as you can see in my screen, uh, we are on the website of ASECA. ASECA, again, is the Skills Assessing Authority for Occupations, Child Care Center Manager, and uh, Child Care Worker. ASECA means Australian Children's Education and Care Quality Authority. Now, um, I will read to you what's on this page. It says, a migration skills assessment is for applicants applying for skilled migration visa. It is an assessment of your early childhood education and care qualifications and employment experience to determine comparability against the assessment standard for a skilled worker in your nominated occupation. So there are two. Uh, again, it's child care center manager and child care worker. Um, so first criteria, a migration skills assessment is for applicants applying for a skilled migration visa for an occupation listed in number one, medium and long-term strategic skills list. That is where the child care center manager is listed and a regional occupation list where the child care worker is listed. Now let's look into the uh, eligibility requirements, particularly the assessment standards for child care center manager occupation. Now, as you can see on the screen, 
As to qualification, educational qualification, it states that uh, you must have finished an approved or a nationally approved diploma level or higher education and care qualification. So if you studied on a student visa here, then on a course in early childhood with an approved education provider, then you complied with the first requirement. Now, the second requirement is a bit somehow problematic. If you don't know what type of visa you're going to apply after the expiry of your uh, temporary graduate visa, which is only for 18 months, because you cannot apply for migration skills assessment if you cannot have worked for three years full-time or part-time equivalent employment. Now, why I say there's a problem? There is a problem because the temporary graduate visa is only for 18 months or one year in. Um, one year in. So what would be the other visa options that you could apply so that you can finish the three years uh, work experience that could either be full-time or part-time equivalent. Now, what is the reckoning point for computing the three years full-time experience? Now, it's on the ASECA guidelines stating that the employment experience needs to have been completed after you were awarded your um, qualification. And also, uh, expected responsibilities during employment. What are the tasks or the job description? It's also stated in here. Now, as an agent, I believe you may resort to other visas that will give you work rights. Others use training visa, that's good for two years, or others can also do uh, another student visa just to comply with the uh, work experience or the three years full-time or part-time equivalent employment experience. So once you have this and then you have submitted to ASECA for the Migration Skills Assessment, then you may be able to get a positive skills assessment. The first one that we discussed is the provisional skills assessment. Uh, the final stage of the skills assessment is this one. And this is the um, migration skills assessment. So again, the problem with the uh, in complying with the skills assessment is the what visa are you gonna apply because the temporary graduate visa is only for one year and six months and your requirement is you must have worked for three years full-time or part-time equivalent so chances are you can include in the computation the work experience that you have earned while you are still on a bridging visa that could be one or you can apply for a training visa if the employer will sponsor you and make a training plan and other options would be apply for a subsequent um, studies so that you can reach the uh, three years part-time equivalent employment experience. So that is for the child care center manager. Now, what about for the child care worker? As I mentioned a while ago, there is no 485 temporary graduate visa for child care worker because it's not on the medium and long-term strategic skills list but on the regional occupation list. So you cannot apply for that. But take note that unlike the child care center manager's employment experience requirement of three years, the requirement 
of employment experience for child care worker is only for one year, full-time or part-time equivalent. So just one year full-time or part-time equivalent. And the employment experience needs to have been completed after you were awarded your qualification. So one year full-time is not that long. So you can resort to any other visas that can give you work rights. So if you are here in Australia studying early childhood and your husband is also with you on a student dependent, then you can switch and then your husband will study while you will uh, develop more work experience to comply with this requirement. Because take note that the child care worker does not have 485 or the temporary graduate visa that is for 18 months. So you can maximize your work experience when you are still on a bridging visa or um, subsequent student visa because you cannot apply for um, a skilled visa if you will not have a positive skills assessment. So that's why positive skills assessment is very important for your migration plan. So I'll read what are the responsibilities, the tasks. Number one is the uh, provision of education and care for babies, toddlers and children. Second is the leading, the preparation of materials and equipment to support children's learning and development. Third is the uh, provide experiences to support children's play and learning, ensure health and safety of children, support and supervise the daily routines of children, support the inclusion of all children, and support children to develop cooperative behavior. So that uh, these are the tasks for the child care worker, group members only. And again, this is only the, the visa option for this is only um, in the regional area. It's not in the medium to long term strategic list. And it doesn't have uh, 485. Visa. But it doesn't mean to say that if it is not in the medium long term list, it's not all it's it's no longer a possible visa pathway for you. Uh, on the other hand, for the child care center manager, there is a temporary graduate visa for this occupation. And you need to apply for a provisional skills assessment. Uh, get or finish at least 240 placement work hours and then apply, submit the required documentations as uh, mandated by ASECA. And then once your skills, provisional skills assessment is approved, then you can do the migration skills assessment and comply with the evidence of three years full-time or part-time equivalent with the following job description. Develop and implement program to enhance physical, social, emotional, and <coughs> intellectual development of young children. Direct and supervise educators providing care and supervision. Establish and maintain a self and healthy service environment. Facilitate compliance with relevant government requirements. Work in partnership with parents and families to provide appropriate education maintain service records, operational budgets and accounts, and recruit staff and coordinate professional development. So take note of this, the reckoning point in computing the work ex years of experience stated here that the employment experience needs to have been completed after you were awarded your qualification. So. Um, that's all and thank you for listening watching today's information session and I'll see you next time thank you, bye bye
currently, just yeah. this week, week, the Morrison government made additional five changes. So, what are these five changes? The first one is that offshore student visa applications are now allowed. So, before this announcement, there was a confusion whether or not student applicants who are still outside Australia can lodge their student visa application. Yeah. So now, it has been made clear that the Department of Home Affairs will process and decide whether to grant or refuse a student visa application lodge offshore. And if the decision is a student grant, then they can come to Australia once the borders be open. As we know, it's still uncertain when is the exact date for the opening of the borders. There are student visa applications, but there was no clear policy about it. So now it has been clear that student visa applications lodged offshore can be processed and the department can grant or refuse the same. So aside from that, Claudette, the other changes made is that the for those onshore students who did not finish their studies within the period of their original visa because of the COVID-19, if they will apply for the visa extension, the Department of Home Affairs has waived the visa application charge. The visa application charge is the amount of money the department will accept for them to process the visa application. This waiver of the visa application charge will apply only for those whose uh, studies was not completed because of the COVID-19. So the third change, this will only apply to current student visa holders who are studying on a bachelor level or master's level. The student was outside Australia and then they cannot come back to Australia because of the closure of the borders. So while they are doing their online studies outside Australia, the duration of that online studies conducted offshore can be used for purposes of counting the number of weeks for them to comply with the Australian study requirement. The importance of the Australian study requirement is relevant to the 485 or the so-called temporary graduate visa under the post-study stream. And then the fourth change is the temporary graduate or the 485 visa under the post-study stream can be lodged even if the applicant is outside Australia. So if the applicant cannot come to Australia because of the closure of the borders and then their student visa is about to expire and they are eligible for the temporary graduate 485 visa under the post-study stream, they are now eligible to lodge it even if they are outside Australia in this uh, visa, they should lodge it here on shore. And then the last one to that is that the Department of Home Affairs has given additional time for those who are required to provide English language test results because of the pandemic. So if you have lodged your visa and you have not yet taken your English test, you are not required to attach the English test result simultaneously with the lodgement of the visa. The department will accept a proof of booking and that will be enough. But as soon as you have the English test result, you should attach it also to your application so that they can make a decision.
One of the best feelings in life is having, is having moments with the ones you love, even if you're far away from each other. Despite being a thousand miles apart, our feelings haven't changed. Being beside you is a wish that I've long desired. With professional help, the long wait is over. Bridge the gap with Aussie Migration and Visa Professional Solutions. Can study, work, or live in Australia. With the help of our experts, you can fix your migration and visa application efficiently. Now, love doesn't have to be distant. Call us now. If you have a AMVPSolutions.info and Facebook page Aussie Migration and Visa Professional Solutions. Everyone has it. Distractions are everywhere, which makes us feel far from our dreams. Now, there is a way to close that gap. With AMVPS, you can take the one less travel by. And that has made all the difference. Whether big or small, our dreams are there to take us to write our future. Be a scholar now. To learn more, visit our website at amvpsolutions.info. Like us on Facebook at Aussie Migration and Visa Professional Solutions. Oh, 